I love DJing. I love sharing this passion and this music and this energy with these people. I love uplifting them. I love inspiring them to have fun, to not take things so seriously. The nightclub is this magical place where everyone can come and be together and dance and be themselves. And it's like we get to shed all these like titles and labels and bullshit at the door and just be liberated, you know, unified people enjoying the same beat. This manager guy reached out to me and said he had a connection to Playboy magazine, and it, it had never occurred to me to, to, to do that. And the, the idea at first did scare me. It was like, what are people gonna think? And, and it took a long time for me to like convince myself to do it, but it was like, get over yourself. Like, you know, like, what do you want? When I first heard of Rhiannon's story, I thought, well, this challenges me as a feminist. This is certainly not something, you know, I was on the Sinead O'Connor page versus Miley Cyrus. I'm like, well, I don't know if we should be taking off our clothes. So at the beginning, I was, uh, I, I, she challenged me as a character. This ain't no joke. I'm how to make girls rock like a boat. Side to side, up and down. Please that kitty until you drown. My name's Rhiannon Rosier, AKA DJ Rhiannon, and I'm the subject of a film called Rock the Box. My name is Catherine Monk. I am the writer director of Rock the Box, a 10 minute short documentary with the National Film Board of Canada. I guess DJ Rhiannon is an exaggerated and liberated version of Rhiannon. I guess that's a good way of describing her. <laughs> I was a local DJ in Vancouver for I guess eight or nine years, and it was awesome, but it was, yeah, just local gigs, like maybe a hundred bucks here or there, you know? But I, I started to see other DJs like doing things that I wanted to do, and I, I felt like, oh, like, I want these opportunities, like, oh, I wanna travel, like, I wanna, sh I wanna do more of this. And uh, that's what actually led me to the, the Playboy opportunity. My passion is, is like, you know, music and people and energy and connection. So it's like, what do I care how I get there? The assumptions that we carry forward as far as, you know, the Playboy thing. You know, Rihanna is bisexual. I'm a lesbian. It's like, if 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 I dress hot, am I dressing for a man just because that's gonna to appeal to a male gaze? Maybe I'm dressing hot for another woman because I want her gaze. It's really that virgin whore dichotomy, which is um so detrimental to all women, really. It's like, well, you're either a virgin or a whore. And it's like, well, that's not fair. Like, you know what I mean? And it doesn't, it's not even natural. Like, we're all sexual beings, so none of us are virgins. Like, and, and then if you like sex, you're a whore. Like, that's unfair. This dichotomy was created so that we could never, ever be perfect. So we're constantly striving for something that we're not. We're constantly competing with one another, you know, and judging one another, and that's what's keeping us down. Then I realized when I started looking on social media and started researching Rhiannon more, it's like, the only people that are really grinding her down are other women. And if I'm a feminist, the whole premise of feminism is to support your sisters no matter what. Like, that is it. Like, if you're a feminist, support your gender. And I realized, wow, I, it's my body shame. It's my body issues. It's my fear. It's all of that that is interfering in my understanding of this landscape. It was like an all um, female team on the, on the film. And it's about supporting other women, you know? And it's not just a documentary about me. It's about, you know, and not just about female DJs, like all, all women in the entertainment industry and what they, what they face and the kind of decisions they have to make. You know, Rhiannon's so free, she's such, and the minute you meet her, like all that stuff just drains out, you know, it just goes down the drain. It's like, oh my God, she's an empowered, uh, intelligent, um, and totally confident and self-possessed individual. I know who I am, I'm very grounded, and I understand what I'm doing, and yes, I'm wearing a mask, but I'm aware of it. This experience really, um, it just unplugged everything. It's like, wow, I was so cemented in this binary, virgin whore dichotomy, that's what it is, and there's no room for fluidity. And this movie is, I feel, uh, I've never felt so comfortable in my body as a woman. This, this movie has completely transformed my, my whole outlook of gender.